I'm speaking today with James Thompson. He is a partner with Buy Box Experts and a former Amazon business leader and consultant. James, welcome. Thank you for having me on today, Robert. What has been the impact so far of COVID-19 on e-commerce specifically? My world is very Amazon-centric, and I've seen two very specific things happen. Number one, consumers are shopping on Amazon for basically everything and anything they would otherwise go to brick and mortar stores to buy. Um, The other thing we're seeing is walmart.com in the online grocery space continues to surge ahead of everybody else. While Amazon does have some grocery presence, it is walmart.com that has won that particular particular category to date. Mm -hmm. So you just talked about the two big behemoths in in e-commerce. Those are the ones who are really making waves then, right? Yes, uh, certainly there are smaller players that are also finding that they are seeing sales increases. But for most consumers, if we're talking specifically the consumer markets, most of those dollars have been moved specifically towards Amazon.com and Walmart.com. There are some smaller sellers, uh, smaller brands that have established websites and have been able to continue to drive their customers to their shopping carts, be that a Shopify site or a big commerce site or something like that. But the disproportionate amount of activity has moved to Mm Amazon.com. What is particularly unusual about the circumstances of COVID is that consumers who historically have not purchased products online are now starting to not only buy online, but they're disproportionately moving to Amazon. So they're experiencing what that Amazon channel is like. And I suspect many of them are going to continue to use that channel uh, long after COVID has has settled down and we reemerge in some sort of new normal. Do you think it's a question that the Amazon brand is just so dominant that that is just the reflexive decision they make when they go online? The first thing they do is type in Amazon.com. They don't even think about other brands. For consumers who have not experienced online shopping extensively, they may be going to Amazon.com. They may be going to Google. If they go to Google, chances are they're going to end up finding Amazon product listings very quickly anyways. And so here in the United States, as a consumer, if you're on whatever shopping destination that you may be to look for products online, you're going to quickly end up finding that Amazon is the place to be. They have more selection than anybody else. They have typically low or lowest prices of anyone here in the U.S. And they're in a position that even with all of the fulfillment challenges they had uh, through April, they're still able to deliver products basically anywhere in this country within a reasonable time period, faster than what a consumer would otherwise have to do themselves if they had to wander out and try to find a store that was still open providing access to products. Yeah. I guess, as you say, Walmart, though, is still big out there. They must be very confident in their brand because they just announced today that they were folding the Jet.com identity into Walmart.com, which they said they would do about a year ago anyway. So it, it shows some confidence on their part that they can compete, does it not, as a brand? Walmart has a little bit different customer base than Amazon. We talk about the Amazon Prime customer being from a household with income typically over $100,000. Walmart typically serves a family that is not necessarily in the same socioeconomic category. But nonetheless, Walmart's strengths have typically been their physical brick and mortar facilities versus their online presence. Amazon is obviously the flip side where Amazon doesn't have a lot of physical stores. Yes, they have some Whole Food locations, but they first and foremost are an e-commerce company versus being a physical retailer. Mm -hmm. But grocery and food is really where we're seeing the big shift during the pandemic, is it? A lot of people who never dreamed that it would be an acceptable thing to order food over the internet now have done it and they found out it's pretty damn convenient. And maybe whoever is providing that service, whether it's Amazon, Walmart, or your local Safeway or something, is probably going to hang on to a good part of that business post-pandemic, right? I would think so. For many consumers, this is the first time they are experiencing the process of buying groceries online. And so if the experience is a positive one, regardless of which channel they're choosing to to, to select, if that experience is positive, I would think that a lot of consumers will say, you know what, some aspects of my grocery shopping I can do without, and let's, let's just figure out a way to have things delivered to my home. That being said, for many of us, the experience of going to the grocery store is just as much an excuse to get out of the house and go and do things that don't involve children or don't involve work. 
And so I would expect that many grocery stores will find that foot traffic comes back to the stores. Uh, the, the interesting case will be grocery stores that have had to develop some sort of online delivery option for consumers in the last two months. If they've built those relationships or they already have those relationships in place, I think what we'll find is that consumers are more acclimated now to make at least some of their purchases back through the local grocery store that could do local delivery. Mm -hmm. Do you think also click and collect or pick up at the site after ordering on in, uh, over e-commerce or online is, an ex is going to become an acceptable option for consumers? I'm not a big fan of this model. I know there are certainly many people that, that have used this and have experienced it for the first time during the last eight to nine weeks. I, I believe that there are consumers that simply don't want to have to make a trip to the mall or to the store to pick up products. While it is convenient that you can line up and have the, the bag put in your car, it still requires you to show up at the store. And so if I think of the model of I'm working in the office, I'm going home in two hours, I need to feed my family, do I want to have to stop by the local grocery store, the local Target, the local Walmart to pick up my products? Or do I simply drive home and have the groceries waiting for me when I arrive at my doorstep? Mm -hmm. I like the second model a lot more. Uh, th this is all an evolutionary process where different groups of consumers have different comfort zones. And there will certainly be some consumers that say, I have to drive by the local Target anyways because I'm picking up my kids. So it's not a big deal for me to, to stand in line with my car and eventually get the products dropped off. Mm -hmm. Again, I'm not, I'm not a particularly big fan, but I think it's a very good intermediate model for retailers that obviously want to leverage their retail space and haven't yet built out sophisticated uh, multi-warehouse facilities with inventory balancing of all grocery items across geographies. That's a very complicated model to build. So if I, for example, were target.com, I already have hundreds of stores. Let's leverage those in a way where consumers who are already buying through my channel will now put their grocery share of wallet back into my store because I'm making it safe and convenient for them to be able to pick up groceries. Right. You're fulfilling from, in those cases, from the store, not from some distribution center then, right? You that is that closer is correct. to the customer. And in the case of grocery stores, they are probably closer to the consumer than anyone else. I mean, there's probably, they're probably, most people are within at least a few miles of a grocery store. So it seemed to be a good proposition there to fulfill from a Safeway or yes. something like that yes. as well. If or, I live in an urban location, there are grocery stores nearby. If I live in rural America, right. I'm going to have the same challenges, whether I'm having it shipped to me or I'm driving 40 miles to the local Walmart store. In both situations, it's not particularly convenient if I, if I live in rural America. Mm -hmm. So have the players been set into place going forward? Is there any room for smaller e-com merchants to find a way to squeeze into this picture and make a success out of it? E-commerce works for companies that have figured out distribution. And so if you're a small player and you can create a partnership with a last mile distribution partner, someone who can get the products quickly to your customers, even if your customer base is only you know, 50 miles from around your particular store, figuring out how to do that last mile delivery is the critical lever that I believe allows traditional retailers to be able to get into e-commerce in a meaningful way. Not everybody wants to have a nationwide distribution network. And for a smaller regional grocery store, a smaller regional uh, department store, or, or, or just a small standalone brick and mortar store, if they're going to be engaged in, in capturing e-commerce customers, they're going to need a shopping site of their own with a shopping cart, but they also need to have that last mile delivery capability put in place, even if they're not the ones ultimately owning that, that part of the logistics. Yeah. And that being the case, are you pretty confident that this model can scale as more and more people yes. find the appeal of e-commerce? It's going to be a hell of a lot more deliveries going on. Can they make it work? Yes. So building out scalable logistics gets to be expensive very quickly if you're not already leveraging your physical store. Most retailers' stores are not set up to be able to build shipments and get them out the back door, the side door, to delivery teams in large numbers. We will see retailers having to make those types of adjustments, just as Amazon did when they bought Whole Foods and they started retrofitting some of their stores to be able to support pickup, uh, pickup by consumers as well as pickup by delivery services. That, that functionality needs to be put in place to be able to support those online orders. 
And that's certainly something that even a small retailer with a few stores could say, we can make a sizable for them, but yet reasonable investment to be able to do some retrofitting. We will partner then with a logistics partner who will do that last mile delivery and do it with high confidence and create a, a good warm feeling for consumers that they're gonna get their products quickly. Uh, unlike Amazon, most companies don't wanna own last mile delivery. And so Amazon has, has been able to do that and be able to do it quite well, allowing it to scale during this COVID period. But lots of companies can move into the online space without needing to be in the logistics business themselves. Yeah. Well, it sounds like some permanent changes are in store for e-commerce. It was growing pretty steadily before, but boy, it sounds like it's really going to take off now in a very permanent way. James Thompson of Buy Box Experts, I want to thank you so much for giving us your view of how this world is changing pretty fast. Thanks very much for being with us today. Appreciate it. Thank you, Robert.